Here's a map of the search field of the Crater Diamond State Park. And what I'm trying to find are one of these trenches from the old mining companies. I was told by a legend, Marshall Reef, that's what James Arch was looking for, was this trench. One of these trenches over in here, probably that one, or TR-14. But if we could find one of those trenches, Marshall said, I would make history. I would have more diamonds than anybody has found out of a hole. Possibly double digits as well. And that's close to where my one carrot came from. Nothing like digging for diamonds. Welcome back to another adventure, my fellow miners, prospectors, and rock hounders. And if you're new to my channel, I hope you decide to subscribe. We are at the Crater of Diamonds. I have Dozer here with me. His name's Charles. Uh, he's been out here digging around and he wants to learn how to dig a deep hole and get gravel. So that's what we're going to do today is first probe around and see if we can find some gravel and then work on digging it, washing it, and get those diamonds. I hope you all enjoy it. If you'd like to see more videos like this, drop a thumbs up. Okay, so I've probed a few times. I found a nice crunchy spot. So now we're trying to probe around that area to make sure we got enough gravel to even dig. Right there's the shovel. Okay, there's crunch there. Looks like it's going more towards the east. <sighs> Can't pull it out. Oh no, you're good on that. Yeah, we're, we're good on that. Yeah, I keep working, cleaning it out, and I'll work on making this a little bit wider. Yeah. Yep, yep. Oh, 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 Imagine that. I can predict the future. Okay, we're still at it. We're about halfway to the gravel. I'm working on cutting in a step right here to help carry the buckets out. When you're down deep, it's hard to get the buckets out, so it's nice to have some steps. And plus, you're supposed to have your whole slope, and that'll help add to the sloping. God. One more, huh? Two and a half feet. I think it could be higher up over here. Out there it started to. All right, so about four feet down, four and a half, and the soil has turned to a greenish color that's always a good sign right there always a good sign it's really thick it's gonna be hard to dig out but that's a sign that nobody's been here in a while okay we're getting down to the five feet marker and it's time to add the slat board 
I'll let you all try to figure out what it's for on your own. It's always somebody's job to get back here and make room for more material coming out of the hole. And you don't want your material too far because we got to put all this back to the top. About a foot and a half away from the gravel. About time to start filling up buckets and getting this hole filled in. Call it a day. Be back out tomorrow and get the buckets washed. Get our diamonds. All right, it's about 120 degrees in the hole. I just got out of it. We're getting the gravel out. Time for a safety meeting. And that means get this shirt off, get these boots off, and get something to eat. Yeah, let me have a bucket, I guess, because I'm down here. I'll try to get you one. All right, we've been getting gravel out. It's miserable. I was so exhausted from digging out the gravel, I could hardly speak. I needed out of that hole and out fast. It's around 120 degrees this time of year. Nothing like digging for diamonds. Working on filling in the hole. Check out this gravel though. This looks like the exact same stuff when I got my 12 buckets and had four diamonds in it. And this is the same area where my one carrot came from. So, fingers crossed. All right, we've been at it all day. It's getting to be about 2.30, so it's time to finished getting the hole filled in we're gonna haul our few buckets that we got get our diamonds hey okay, it's day two the first day we dug the hole now i'm headed out here to get my buckets washed i'm gonna go set up at the south wash station it's gonna be a really busy day it's saturday lots of people already starting to show up let's take a look Boy, that sun's coming out. All right, I'm at the South Wash Pavilion today. We've got our buckets from the hole. Got my new classifiers right here. That's the breakdown screen from my old set. Here's my new 3.8s. And the bottom screen is a number 16 instead of an 18 like I had. So it will be much easier to get material worked. All right, let's get these buckets washed and look at some centers. All 
All right, so a lot of you have problems pulling your five gallons of buckets apart and the key to keep them from sticking. You see all these little specks of mud right here and all that, it's just a lot of dirt and mud. If you don't get that out, it's gonna stick to the bucket that's inside this bucket. So you wanna clean your buckets fully to get all of that stuff off even the bottom all that mud's got to come off you get all that off and your buckets will not stick you're welcome all right we got two buckets down i'm gonna show you all the top screen you see how this growl is loaded with all types of red jasper I mean, we got red jasper. We've been seeing agate, beautiful piece of agate come out of Dozer's bucket. So we we're definitely in the good stuff. We will check out some centers pretty soon. All right, he's got to come and wash out the tanks. As you can see, after a while, they fill up. So maintenance comes out here and gets them cleaned up for us. We'll get back at it here in a minute. that come after they drain the tanks and they find diamonds right there. All right, here's the maintenance man filling up the water tank, doing his job for us. Getting us some fresh water. What a beautiful crater fly. Okay, after five buckets, this is my concentrates. Not bad, it looks really good. So we're gonna get the Saruka and get this centered up. Might have two flips with the Saruka, not too many, man. Take a look at the centers. All right, making centers. This is the second center I've made out of the five buckets. We got some quartz, so we got some hematite and some magnetite a little bit of spinel not much the little white pieces here is the calcite i don't see any barite lots of red jasper so it's not a bad center we'll just need at least 10 more buckets of this and i've got a little bit more to flip maybe the diamonds in there and that'll be the end of it of course, I'll go over all this on the tray. That's where we get the one, two, and three point diamonds. Okay, here's all the centers into one. And you can see how there's so much more gravel when you dig a hole into those gravel veins versus working the surface. Normally, when you're working the east drain, this is lamprite all the way to here is lamprite. Then you'll have some gravel and then your heavies. But you can see here, we have a lot of good heavies. Looks like some hematite right there, that black rock. We'll zoom in a little better. There we go. There's the hematite. There's some more hematite, the black shiny rock. There's the calcite, that white and looks like some quartz down here. No garnets, but we see a lot of hematite and there's gonna be some magnetite in there as well, which is a good indicator because it's a heavy. So yeah, you don't always want a big white ring right here. Normally that's calcite and quartz. That's not a good indicator. Your good indicators are these spinel all these darker jasper because 
when your jasper is red, that means it's got iron also on it. Okay, we're gonna let this dry and you'll notice how a lot of these rocks are going to turn white and also we'll get a magnet and remove all the magnetite and then we'll scoop that up put it in the gold pan and go over everything on the tray that's where we get those small diamonds looks like there is spinel going to be the black shiny rocks the hematite is normally smooth. Like over here, you can see the hematite right there, that black smooth rock, and like that one there. And the spinel is gonna be this black shiny rock, which is a really good indicator. And when you do a flip and your material is solid, rocks like this, your diamond could be way out here. They don't always travel into the center. Most of my diamonds are found out here on the edge, right in here. So keep that in mind and you'll wanna scoop this up and then rework all of this again. And that'll bring that diamond towards the center once you get some of the heavies out of the way. Okay, it's fully dried. Doesn't take long in this Texas sun, I'll tell you that. But you can see how a lot of this jasper slash gravel has turned white. See how all that's kind of got a lot of white bleach gravel in here. Not always a bad thing but the bleach gravel doesn't really have the best chances for diamonds. There's diamonds in it. I have found diamonds in the bleach gravel and I'll do it again. It's just, you gotta work a lot of it. Since the gravel has dried, that spinel really stands out. and just noticed how much lighter the material looks versus wet. And if your material doesn't bleach out like that, you're in some really good stuff. I've asked several miners that's been out there for 40 years and nobody has an explanation for the bleach gravel. It could have been a natural occurrence or it could have been something that the old mining companies did to maybe identify that that gravel has been worked. We don't know. Now I'm gonna take this earth magnet. These are the strongest magnets you can get. And we're gonna see what kind of material we can pick up using it. All kinds of stuff sticking to it as you can see quite a few magnetite in there sometimes there's more and that's a good indicator having magnetite Just gonna wrap it up for this video we dug a deep hole I got five buckets dozer got four and it really takes a few more buckets apparently because we didn't see a diamond on the center but that doesn't mean I don't have a small diamond that will show up on the tray so you always want to take your material and go through it on the tray at the house and you'll definitely find some diamonds that way
I hope you all enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.